So I think I'm trying to be a little complimentary to Priya's presentation, and hopefully um, Lori, who will follow, is going to talk also about this. So we'll talk a little bit more about this. This it's really the way I was thinking about it this morning. Um, we talk about next generation imaging, going from conventional imaging, CT scan, bone scan, now to all these more sophisticated, uh, clearly more accurate PET imaging. And there's no doubt that we've made great evolution in ultrasound. So I think of micro ultrasound as the next generation imaging of ultrasound. And for all of us who were training back in the days of Cooner and Lee, uh, the quality of the ultrasound was rather, you know, uh, a blunt. And a regular uh, ultrasound, 7 to 9 uh, uh, hertz, has, has, has gotten better. And this is just next generation I mean, This is just that much better because you get 70 micron resolution. So what does that mean to go to 29 megahertz? You get 300 percent higher resolution than traditional ultrasounds that you have today that are, are on, usually around 6 to 9 megahertz. Um, it has to do with the crystal technology, which is not my area of expertise, but what I've noticed if you're uh, in practice is the box is the same size, so the equipment qualification, and quite fr frankly, the core competency for urology. This is just a more advanced version of the ultrasound transrectal approach that you've been doing for a, a decade or two or three decades. The Primus protocol um, is very interesting and in a very clever uh, correlate to the PIRADS version 2 correlate that Priya showed you a second ago. Uh, and there's a learning curve and we'll talk about that. So uh, it's, a, it's next generation versus conventional ultrasound. And as Priya mentioned, you see the margins of the anatomical boundaries much, much better. I mean, you see the urethra, you see the apex, the, you see seminal vesicle, the non -VAs. Um, it's really quite remarkable compared to a traditional or conventional ultrasound. So um, you can argue that you see the margins, and here you see the peripheral zone, the ejaculatory ducts, and this is a typical uh, image. You don't have the green highlighting. That's here for, for demonstration purposes. So margins of the zones, and that's particularly important if you're planning an interventional procedure, whether it's uh, uh, an extirpative prostatectomy or possibly uh, an ablative strategy with uh, HIFU or cryo. Um, these small calcified lesions, you have to sort of learn the primus uh, mapping grade, grades one, two, three, four, and five. And you could pick one of these cards up and, and learn about this either online or at any at one of the, the booths that's here today. And sometimes these calcified areas are consistent with the pattern recognition of malignancy, and sometimes they're just concretions within the, uh, the anatomy. Um, but there can be really subtle deviations in the prostate margin. Here's a nice example uh, of uh, a, a, a lesion that you could see pushing into the rectal wall that you would almost certainly not see with conventional ultrasound. Uh, the neurovascular bundles you can see very nicely as well if, if that's part of where you're going to inject potentially for a periurethral block or where you're going to be doing your biopsy, especially if you're doing a transperineal guided biopsy. Um, I showed you yesterday in one of my presentations about uh, transperineal versus transrectal ultrasound and really nice work by at Perineologics with Matt Alloway, but now ExactView has a clip-in uh, uh, adapter to their probe, which will allow for transperineal approaches as well. And what's really kind of neat is you just see these vividly, and you can record these and see if you're going back and doing repeat biopsies in the future and you keep it in your cassette library where you did your biopsies previously. Uh, here's an example, here's case one, this is a Primus 5, sort of similar to what you'd suspect in a Pyrads 5. Um, this is the patient's information uh, and here's very subtly where you might direct your needle biopsy. Here's another case example of a hypoechoic lesion with some irregular shadowing. I think what's really interesting, and not the topic for today, but this pattern recognition and the whole notion of artificial intelligence and thinking of a way to how to take this pattern recognition in conjunction with uh, a fusing MRI, which I think is really the ultimate future for this, is, and there is a software package that is being developed where you'll be able to get just a basic MRI. It doesn't have to be multi-parametric, just a simple uh, MRI from a cognitive standpoint, which I think makes the most sense from a cost standpoint, uh, and, 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 and merging that into your software uh, with micro-ultrasound. 
and here's another case example, uh, that is, it's kind of subtle, but not really when you start to look at it. So regarding the, the, the cases and how long it takes you, what's nice about the way they've rolled this out is all of the, they'll send somebody into your clinic to help work with you like almost all device companies do for a few cases. But most of the training you can do online uh, with, these, with these modules, these web-based modules, and there's a regular follow-up on it. There was a study that was done, and uh, uh, there was a conclusion it takes about 15 cases. You know, that's always variable. You know, we used to hear robotic uh, prostatectomy. It took you about 20 cases, and then some studies have said it's really more like 200 cases. I, I think in this there's probably some variation as well. It could take some... Some of you in the room may be 10 cases, and it might take some of you 20 cases, but it's clearly not that difficult to learn how to interpret uh, the different patterns. Uh, here's another case to look at, uh, and you see what they call this classic sort of starry night uh, a la Van Gogh, but this smudgy and hypoepichoic area, which is sort of classic for a, a malignant lesion. So here's a paper that was done. I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly for purposes of time. Uh, and essentially, um, some very nice work has been done uh, both in, in Spain and Italy as well as in Canada, and some work in the United States as well, looking at comparing how does this stack up against uh, multiparametric MRI. Uh, this particular paper won a best uh, of session at, at AUA 2019, and demonstrating that microultrasound was more sensitive in picking up significant cancers in, in a meta-analysis of 280 patients. Uh, and you see that one of the sites that was used in that was Cleveland Clinic. Um, uh, here's some other examples of work that was done, and this paper was presented a additionally at ESUI, again showing where it's stacking up with traditional Gleason scoring and the negative predictive value. And as what Dan Lin said the other day, when it comes to markers, whether it's imaging or whether it's uh, urine or serum-based, the king is negative predictive value. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, looking at initial experiences with transrectal MR, cognitive guided uh, microultrasound biopsies uh, versus established transperineal robotic uh, MR imaging. Here's a nice paper that uh, is in, I think it's published now, um, comparing with the Artemis uh, versus the, that strategy for uh, NPR MRI and exact cognitive fusion, uh, and there was a, actually some increase in positive predictive value, although the PPV on all of these is not ex it, it, it ideal by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, the holy the grail is avoiding uh, 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 missing clinically significant cancers, and uh, if we can do that, that's really the key strategy. Um, there have really been uh, overall, we need more comparative uh, uh, studies. Uh, you know, we're sort of at the nascency still of this technology in terms of the data. There's clearly more robust and a, a decade of, of MRI data that's uh, available. Uh, but uh, this is a nice paper, an Italian paper by Lucasani that basically showed had a superior sensitivity uh, in, in a, a meta-analysis uh, within Italy. So I do think that the, ultimately it's the combination will be using it with a, a MR. I think cognitive will probably clearly be the most cost-effective way to do it, the most practical way to do it throughout the community. Clearly not in sophisticated, more advanced centers, whether it's community or academic, but for the large po population for adoption, I think this is where it's going. By the way, with this ultrasound technology, you can do traditional uh, 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 7 to 9 megahertz. You can toggle and go from small to, mi to middle to more high, high micro ultrasound features. So you do have that flexibility. Uh, we need more trials, there's no doubt about it, um, but I do think that uh, ultimately these papers which I've showed you are, are all, you know, moving in that direction. Uh, like many other things, change is sometimes hard to adapt to, and I think this is something that really uh, bears uh, interest for virtually anyone doing ultrasound uh, of the prostate. It's a single patient visit. It's a very quick uh, resolution. The workflow is there. The ability to get knowledgeable is fairly quick. Um, and it can be used for all the different aspects of first-time biopsy, confirmatory biopsy. Um, so I'll conclude with that. Thank you very much.